Warning, this video is for entertainment and demonstration purposes only. Please consult a certified automotive technician for your automotive needs. So, some are asking what am I doing on this fine Sunday morning on March 13, 2015. Well, I'm ready to do the Corolla's first oil change. And at... Oh, that's right. This doesn't uh, give you the mileage when you open the door like the Cobalt. 77,534 miles. Alright, so here are some things you're going to need. Always good to have a service manual. can give you important things like the torque specs on the drain plug and the uh, oil filter cap. But more on that in a moment. You need your oil, of course. Um, this... 09 and later Corolla can use 0 W20 at any temperature. It's especially recommended if you're at 0 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 18 Celsius and below. A torque wrench that can do inch pounds only because 27 and 18 inch pounds, uh, that's pretty low for a half inch drive torque wrench. You're barely going to hear a click. Uh, you're going to need this oil filter cap tool for the 09 and later and what goes on this nut that's welded to it is a 1516 socket, which can go on a 3 8 drive ratchet here, and a 14 millimeter socket for the drain pan. You may or may not need these pliers to um, get the oil filter cap off. You would just uh, use the wide setting. There you go, just like so. I'll only take it off, of course, never to put it back on. And a pick so you can um, get that gasket off the oil filter cap and of course your oil filter and there's something I have to say about the oil filter. Yes, that's right. This is what they look like. And there's only one place you want to get a cartridge filter like this from and that is Toyota. And it was only five bucks a piece at Toyota. And um, the reason for this is these cartridge filters, this doesn't apply just to Toyota. Same for the GMs that use the cartridge filters, like my Ecotec and my Cobalt. Be it uh, for your Hyundai owners out there, Volkswagen, the Ford Power Stroke, what have you. Get it from the dealership. Very strict patents. Others in the aftermarket might have a different height on that filter, and that could affect the filtration, as well as the quality of the filter medium. So, and like I said, five bucks a piece. It'd be a little more absurd not to get it from Toyota. So... That's what I did there. That's my whole recommendation anytime you're running into a cartridge filter um, in any vehicle. Um, a funnel, but this particular one, made by AST, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up. It actually has the threads of the oil filler cap. So that way, see, slip that son of a gun right off, just like so. Slip this on. Has the nice rubber gasket on the bottom, too. Oh, check that out. Yeah, how much I paid for it. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. Then you don't have to spill any oil. Awesome. Now, as I just mentioned moments ago, and you can see this, you have two viscosity options here. And many are asking what temperature range. Well, you can get a service manual. We have two charts. Um, the Pre-09 Corollas, they, um, they call for the 1030 or 530. Um, their yardstick seems to be 0 degrees Fahrenheit, eight, negative 18 Celsius. Uh, that or above, you can use 1030, and it seems to prefer to use 5W30. Remember, the W is just the winter grade for when it's cold. That 30 in the end is the more important one. Same here for the um, 09 and later. I have a 2010. They use 5W20. However, you can use 0W20 across the whole spectrum here. And if anyone tells you it harms the engine to use synthetic, uh, bull. First of all, 0W20 only comes in synthetic. And synthetic always flows better and is always better for your engine. Alright, now, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up here. But if you follow the oil pan, there's your oil filter cap right here for your 09 and later Toyota Corollas. So what you're going to do, take this tool here, all right, and what you're going to do is just slide it right on, just like so. You see, it's going to engage it, and then you uh, take your 3 8 drive long ratchet, 
with um, the 15 16 socket and then you're gonna unscrew it and let it drain now I'm not gonna show it because I think that's pretty obvious and I don't feel like getting oil all over the camera so here's the old oil filter with the housing out simply just pull the filter like so there you go and for this gasket here this is where the pick comes in I'm gonna dig into that pick not the pick the uh, the gasket you get the idea pretty much see how I'm doing that hey see as able to get a hook on the gasket ouch don't uh, don't poke yourself with these picks and then the oil filter kit comes with that it comes with a new drain plug gasket as well as a new o-ring this one's not damaged so I guess I could save it now no, not gonna save it as an extra now I'll need both hands for that, but you get the idea on that. You're going to slip your new one on, and then you're just going to insert your new filter. Now, I needed both hands free, so... But you slip the gasket on, the O-ring, I should say. Dip my finger in a little bit of the residual oil there, and um, just lubed up the uh, O-ring. Take your new filter, just slips on, like so. Um... Now, I can't go to 324 inch-pounds on this, although there are some inch-pounds pounds torque wrenches that go up to 350 inch-pounds. This one, unfortunately, only goes down to 30, but even 30 is going to be better than freaking wailing on it like uh, some mechanics might do. And I did a little test to make sure I could hear the click. You can hear the click even on its lowest setting. So, um, I'm going to slap this son of a gun back on. Oh, and when you're taking it out, you know, think of it like this, it's sideways. You're going to have oil start pouring out, so back it out slowly, let the oil pour out, and then you completely pull it out. And then while it's draining out of the filter housing, you just, um, do your thing, swap out the, uh, the ring and the filter. Do that. This is where I am at now. Okay, so there she be, torque to spec. Well, torque to spec and then some. But here is the drain plug gasket. No, no. There we go. And don't forget the kit also comes with a new drain plug gasket. And hopefully I don't make a complete freaking mess here. Between doing the filter first, because I want to do the hard part first. Plus a little bit of my filming. And remember I did drive this car around before I uh, did this. So this oil definitely has had all the time it needed to drain to the bottom of the um, pan. But still be nice and hot so... All the contaminants are suspended in the oil and will drain out. So see, it drains nicely, but also won't take off my skin because uh, these Japanese engines in particular, they love to run them really, really hot. And there you go. This is no different than, well, any other oil change here. Just draining oil. Nothing further to see. Okay, so while that oil's draining, you slip on the new gasket, which just simply means that the old one is stuck onto the oil pan, but I just got to remember to knock that off. Do the same on yours. You don't want to do a double gasket. That will be a disaster. And for those of you wondering, yes, here's the old gasket. I'm going to throw this little box here with the old filter and old O-ring. This is very environmentally sound, this setup. So yeah, I do like that. And then there you go. Gonna screw the son of a gun back in right now. Yes, I totally meant for that to fall out of my hand. All right, so here we are back at the oil pan. You can see it's drain plug, new gasket. 18 foot pounds, which is the same as 216 inch pounds, which is within range on my inch pounds uh, torque wrench here. You should be able to hear. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Oh, look at that. Alright, so drain plug is torque to spec. Just uh, just something noteworthy. With click type torque wrenches, when you're done with them, always turn them back down. Or that spring inside the shaft can lose its tension and then it won't be accurate. It's especially crucial when you have something that's down inch pounds, so wipe it up, make sure you wind it down, and then you can put it away. And always try to preserve its case too, so that way it's protected in the toolbox. Yeah, the camera didn't turn on, but 
anyway, it would have just been, well, pouring oil down a funnel. The only difference is you can really get away with it, with it on this one because you have the threads in the bottom and this gasket so you can actually leave the jug like this so you get every last drop of oil. And that's pretty much it on that. The next thing I want to show you, and the final thing you have to do, is um, reset the maintenance light. And the way you do that, even if it didn't come on, you reset it because you got new oil in there. Hit the auto slash trip button so you're highlighting trip odometer A. And then what you're going to do, you turn it off. And then after that, what you're going to do is while the vehicle's off, you're going to hold down that little button there and turn the key back on. Okay, so I got my finger down on that button. I'm going to turn the key on. And what you're going to see it do, you see the dashes disappearing. Bunch of zeros, that means you are reset. 